it's the, its use rate is 22 ounces, and then it has the half a pound of dicamba or 16 ounces. Now, 1691, what is that? So this is a product that you guys won't use, but this is a product that EPA is working on to get over the top application approvals uh, on round of extended soybeans. So that is what we're waiting for, to get a label. Once we get a label there, and then these products then will fall right after that. BASF has a product called Ingenia. It also will be uh, coming right after N1691 is labeled. Okay. Now, we went through a comment period. EPA, anytime a herbicide or a chemical pesticide needs to be labeled, they, they, they put it out there and say, does anybody want to comment on this product? Last year, Dow went through that same process with their product called Enlist, Enlist Duo, which is Round, Roundup and 2,4-D. How many comments do you think the EPA got on Enlist Duo? Thousand? Four hundred thousand. Four hundred thousand comments. What's funny is a lot of them said, I hate Monsanto. Which is weird because it's not a Monsanto product, it was a Dow product. This year, we're thinking, oh my gosh, 400,000 comments from Enlist Duo, how many are we going to get with Extend? We got 20,000. So maybe uh, the activists had a uh, comment fatigue or something, but they didn't, uh, they didn't respond much. But all the comments, not all, but a good majority of comments were favorable. We had comments from uh, DuPont, Syngenta, uh, other chemical companies that said, you know, we, we need this technology, okay? So, favorable comments on, on that. So that public comment period ended in the end of May. So now the EPA, they go through all the comments, they look at it, they work with us to kind of formulate a federal label. So we're still waiting on that label then for these products here and this. Once that occurs, and we're anticipating uh, this fall, that that will occur, um, then we'll be ready to go for 2017, okay? So that's where we stand in this, in this label issue. We don't have a label yet. You can't use dicamba on your <coughs> extended soybeans this year. It's illegal. Uh, all of the products that we put out, all the information, all the education says you cannot use dicamba on ground extended soybeans. There is no label for that. Uh, the bags, the tags have this uh, big disclaimer on here, do not use dicamba. If you do, you're in big, big trouble. Um, and so uh, that's, been, that's been the big issue this year. So the beans are out there, but we just couldn't use the full system. Okay, if you look closely, back up here. If you look closely at this slide here, you saw the word vapor grip. Okay, so what is vapor grip? <coughs> okay, so vapor grip is it's not a marketing name, it's not some smoke and mirrors, it is an actual substance that's in the formulation. It's only in Roundup Extend and Extended Mass. So, Banville. When I say the word Banville, what comes to mind? Drip. You said drip. What else? Anything else? Yeah. You can spread and after maybe a week, stuff raises up. Gets up and walks away, right? A lot of people say that. Gets up and walks away. Drift. You know, nobody says, Banville, excellent herbicide. I never hear that. It's because Banville has a lot of baggage with it, and that is the volatility. So you, what you describe is volatility. What you describe is sort of like volatility. It gets up and picks away. We don't know where it goes. Okay. That was the big issue with Banville. Banville is the most volatile dicamba on the market. I don't even know if you can buy Banville anymore. It's probably a generic company that sells it. 1996, BASF came out with Clarity, greatly lowered that volatility because it was a different salt form. Okay? So, what is vapor grip? So, vapor grip is a substance that's put in the formulation and helps lower that volatility. And here's how it works. So, over here on this side of this cartoon, we have 
a tank of water. We put Banville in it, and then we spray it on the leaf. Okay. Now, on the leaf or on the surface of the ground, you have these H molecules, which stand. Where does the H come from? From the water. That's the hydrogen, right? So H2O is water. Okay. So you have a lot of H molecules on that leaf. It's positively charged, and the dicamba is negatively charged. So what happens when you have a positive and negative? They come together, and when they come together, they form dicamba acid, this dot right here. And it's the acid then that picks up and walks away, okay? Or at least picks up when the wind kind of walks, walks away. So that's what happens. It's the dicamba acid that's volatile with band. Now, with vapor grip, what it does is it surrounds that hydrogen. It chelates the hydrogen, so now the hydrogen doesn't bind with the dicamba. It can't, right? So it's chelated. So if there's no binding, there's no acid made, and if there's no acid made, there's no volatility. Okay. So we've pretty much taken the, that component out of it. Now, will dicamba, will round of extend drift? Yes, it can if it's what? Wind. Right. So here we're just talking about volatility. And again, greatly lower the volatility, just heating up and walking away issue. So we'll uh, close this door a little bit. So here's what we did to demonstrate this. We call this the green donut. I'll show you the donut here in a minute. So this is a field of Roundup Ready soybeans, okay? Just a typical Roundup Ready soybeans. And we put this tarp around this section. This is a 10 by 20 foot section. So we don't have any particles drifting over onto the beans, okay? And then we spray the center here with Roundup Extend, which has the vapor grip. Okay? We picked up the tarp carefully, uh, and later you saw that, okay? Kill the beans, right? Because, uh, uh, these are just straight round of pretty beans. Where's all the cupping? Don't beans cup from dicamba? There's no cupping. Look, dead beans, live beans, no cupping. Is there any volatility? No. It didn't volatilize. Okay? If we had done this with Banville, my whole farm would have been cupped. Okay? Because I've been working with Banville a long time. So Banville is very volatile. So with the vapor grip in there, we don't have the volatility. Okay, let's talk about what the label's going to say, the anticipated label. So you'll see this information in a lot of literature around. This is the anticipated label requirements. <coughs> a lot of guys, guys, a lot of these things are common sense anyway. You do them anyway with other herbicides. So let's review some of these. Alter course droplets. So the label will re require a tip, a nozzle tip that produces a big droplet. Okay. It has to be in that alter course category. So one of the uh, options there is TTI, Turbo T Reduction Nozzle Tips. So uh, go to your manufacturer or wherever and get those, those tips. So they create a big droplet. It feels like a shower, like you're, like you're taking a shower. That's what the droplet feels like, okay? It's not the XR tips. The XRs feel like a mist, like you're at the uh, theme park and you know it's a little hot day and you walk through that misty thing. That's, where will those droplets go? Who knows? I mean, those things will, will, will fly a long way. But these large droplets will go where you spray. They don't, they don't drift. They're heavy. But they are air filled. Okay, they fill up air. When they hit, they explode on the leaf, so you actually do get like smaller droplets that cover the leaf. I've used these tips uh, for a number of years. They work really good. Um, soil applied if you're just spraying a, a pre, or post applied if you're spraying something like ground with extend. So you're going to ask me, well, large droplets, you're not going to get the coverage that you need, right? Well, what are we spraying? Roundup and dicamba. What do they do? in the plant. Brands are right? 
Do we need to paint the weed? No. We just need to get a few of the uh, leaves wet. So we don't need excellent coverage. So large droplets work really well with this herbicide. What about if you're spraying Liberty or Cobra or Blazer? Do those nozzle work with that chemistry? No. Because you're not getting very, very good coverage. You're getting big blotches. You need a really fine mist that really paints that weed. So those droplets will not do well with that chemistry. So you need a big droplet. Uh, we're going to spray small weeds. Okay? We're not going after the big weeds anymore. Big weeds means that you won't get them killed, and then they start selecting for resistance, right? So you've got to use, you've got to go after the small weeds. Ground speed, keep it under 15. We talked about the approved herbicides, Roundup Extend, Extendamax, Ingenia. What about Banville? They going to be labeled? No. Can I use Banville on Roundup Extend soybeans? Again, I don't know if you can even get it now or not. Can't use Clarity either. These are the only products that's going to be like. You need a full rate, no cutting rates, triple rinse. Um, I've got a demonstration to show that in a second, how important that is. Um, wind speed, 3 to 10. Okay, that's, that's pretty typical. About every herbicide level says that. Uh, if it's gusting over 15, you know, you don't know where those particles are going to go. Um, what about below 3? What, like today, it's, like it's almost zero out. Is that a good day to spray? It's like perfect conditions, right? What happens when it's zero out? On the way over here this morning, I saw a lot of fog and haze above the beans. What's that called? Inversion. Inversion, right? Inversion layer. You got warm air trapping cold air beneath. When that happens, the particles will just stay suspended in that fog and then when that little breeze does come along, then it blows it off hard. And that's not good. So you want some mixing, okay? So yeah, that looks like a perfect day, but maybe you want some mixing there uh, to get those particles to go where they're supposed to be spread. Yeah. Morning. Okay, 10 to 15 gallons per acre is the, uh, about the uh, volume that we want, okay? By the way, that's about five times my GPA in college. Right there. <laughs> All right, look at this right here. AMS with a line through it. What's AMS? What's, what's that stand for? You guys know this. Morning sulfate. Morning sulfate, good. What do we use volume sulfate with? What herbicide? Roundup. Roundup. Why? Make it active. Make it active. Because a retailer told me to, right? <laughs> a retailer yeah. likes to, likes to uh, sell stuff. What does AMS do? It conditions the water. So if you have hard water, which Indiana does, so you got calcium, you got iron, you got magnesium, you got all kinds of stuff in there. And that ties up the Roundup, right? <coughs> so it doesn't make the Roundup work when it's tied up. So you put AMS in the water first. It takes the minerals out. Your Roundup works great. Everybody's happy. Keep doing that with Roundup, OK? I love AMS. However, don't use AMS with Roundup Extend. Because here's why. When we put AMS in the tank of water, what's that do to the pH? Lowers. Lowers the pH, and when you lower pH, you're making more what? Hydrogen. That's more hydrogen than what that vapor grip can overcome. So you just made a volatility problem by adding AMS. Okay. And we've been doing it for years. You think about it. AMS with the clarity, we've actually caused a volatility issue by doing it. Lowering the pH causes more hydrogen, and that's more hydrogen than what that vapor grip can overcome. Okay. So we're not going to require, or we're not going to allow AMS. We will allow non-AMS water conditions. And uh, Winfield and Helena and a lot of other companies have these now that you can use with, with uh, Roundup Extend. They'll condition your water, but they won't have that, you know, lowering the pH and adding more hydrogen problems. Okay, I just wanted to point that out and make sure 
that you know not to use AMS. Okay. What was this called again? The inversion layer. All right. So traveling home one evening, somebody had a nice little uh, burn pile going, and the smoke was just uh, right here, right above the crop, because there was cold air trapped below the warm air. And if you spray under those conditions, that's where your herbicide is going to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, how important is it to clean out the tank? So this is a demonstration we did. Um, I sprayed Clarity in the corn. I had about seven gallons left. I went back to the shop. I dumped that seven gallons in a bucket, and I rinsed the tank one time. I came back out, and I sprayed these beans, these are Roundup Ready beans, with that one rinse aid, okay? Well, they look like they're okay. They're nice and green. See where they're at, uh, according to when I hit the right below his knees, about, the, about, about his shin here, okay? Look at the beans over here and over here. This was a 20-foot boom. It stunned them, right? They're, they're, they turn dark green and they're stunted. And if you look closer, it's all cupped, okay? The nodes are stacked, the new growth is all cupped up, and those beans, by the way, stayed that way all season. They never grew. It was the weirdest looking thing. They just stayed green and stunted um, all season. So we went back to the shop. We rinsed it a second time with water. This time we added a tank cleaner. Came back out and sprayed. And now you see that typical cupping, right, that you see sometimes from, from sprays. Went out the third time, spray or triple rinsed for the third time, rinsed for the third time, came back, sprayed that rinse aid, and now they have no injury. So triple rinsing does work for herbicides, especially dicamp. Here's what happens to dicamp. You will think you have everything cleaned out, and then you'll spray and you'll see cover. So a lot of depends on what you had in the spray tank before. So when I spray Atrazine or Valor or Authority or Status or anything that might have uh, a water dispersible granule that doesn't get all the way dissolved, those little particles get hung up in the screens and in the nozzle assembly. And when that dicamba molecule comes along down your spray boom, it gets stuck to that screen because of that, the herbicide that was there before. Then the next time you spray Roundup, which is a good tank cleaner, right, mm -hmm. it releases that dicamba right out onto the beans. So you can get everything cleaned out of your tank, but if you don't have the nozzle assembly and your strain, strainer is cleaned out, you will see some injury. Okay, Just be aware. All right, so Roundup Extend, awesome uh, herbicide system, but we are not recommending it by itself. We want you to continue to use residual products um, and not just recommend it, we're going to actually incentivize you to do it. So any, any of these products over here, and you can talk to your retailer, they know which ones they are, you will get money back in like three to four dollars per acre back if you use any of these residual products with Roundup or Roundup Extend. Okay? So it's like getting paid to kill weeds. You know, it's kind of a cool concept. But uh, the reason we did this was, again, to make sure, try to drive the right behaviors with you guys so that you will use residuals in the system. You know, what's really refreshing is when I go talk to my, my counterparts and other companies, they're saying the same thing. So Syngenta, Bayer, Dow, all of those, DuPont, they all want you guys to use residual products in their system because we've got to use multiple modes of action now. We can't rely on one herbicide anymore to control our weeds because it's not working. So you have to fight the weeds with different modes of action, and that's how we do that with these residual products. Oh, we got quiz. Okay, I hope you were listening. Okay, if you don't get the quiz right, you do not get any lunch today. That's what I was told. So. Okay, pending regulatory approval, 
Which of the following will be labeled for Roundup Ready to Expand Soybeans in 2017? So look at that list there. Which of these will be labeled next year? If again, EPA helps us out. Matter of Okay. Okay, let's go down the list here. Stendamax? Yes? Sure. Yep. That's that's the Monsanto product. Bando? No. No Bando. Bando doesn't have any vapor grip in it. It's a highly volatile salt. It's not going to be used. Ingenia? Okay, so that's BASF's product, and that will be late next year. Okay? So if you want to use BASF uh, products, you can use Ingenia on your round of extended soybeans. It doesn't have vapor grip in it, by the way. So they, they felt like they don't need it. Round of extend? Yes. And this duo? Oh, no. <laughs> That'd be a screw up if you did that. So what's in the list duo? 240. 240, yeah. It's 240-choline. And if you spray that on a round of extend soybeans, it's like spraying it on regular beans. You will, you will hurt them bad. Okay. How about clarity? No, not like it. It's not going to hurt the beans, but it's a BASF product, and they're going to be selling Ingenia because it's a better salt. Okay. M1691, again, no. Uh, well, it's going to get labeled, but you guys won't see it. You guys probably won't use it next year. So. And what's Fexapan? Fexapan. Anybody know that? Heard of that? This is DuPont's dicamba product. It's going to have vapor grip in it, and that's what they're going to sell to their probably their pioneer customers on their round of extend soybeans. Okay? So DuPont will have uh, a player in this game called Fexapan. <coughs> Sounds like one of those new drugs you see advertised on TV, you know, it's got all the side effects, you know. Don't take Fexapan. You know, if you stop breathing after you take Fexapan, then call your doctor to okay. okay, which of the following is not an anticipated round of extend label requirement? Which one is not a requirement? Sometimes you'll see a 
green stem, and sometimes you'll see a red stem. Okay? Um, you know, the green's not always male, and the red's not always female, although in my experience, the reds most of the time have been the females, but not necessarily. I went up to a red plant. This is, by the way, this is at Elwood, so not far from here where my trials are. And I shook it, and I saw all this pollen dust. So I go, okay, that's a male. That's not the female. So you get different phenotypes, okay? But they all are watery. Now, here's water hemp when it's four to six inches tall. If you were spraying, this is the day to spray, okay? Right there. Because you do not want to wait even another eight hours because it is extremely critical to get them when they're small. Because if you don't, they'll do this. Here it looks like we've killed them and they start growing back. Okay. Very, very difficult to control. So the smaller the better. Um, does this look like your field? <laughs> Hope not. So here's an untreated plot. You can see my little stake right here. Um, again, this was over at Elwood, where I had my trial. Um, so that's what it looked like. So very heavy water neck pressure. Uh, I came in with a residual warrant in Metribuzin. That's the old uh, Metribuzin is the old Syncor. And then I followed with Roundup and Warrant Ultra. Okay, so we got plenty of herbicides there. Uh, if you go back and look, again, there's the mess that we had, and that's what I did. So I cleaned up, you know, I probably got about 85% control, which looks pretty decent, but we don't know if those leaves are going to die or live. So. Keep that photo in mind. We'll look at it a little bit later. Here I, I started with Rowl and Extendamax. Soil applied. It came back with Rowl and Extend and Warrant. So I got two different uh, uh, residuals in this combination here. And all these weeds look sick. They're all bent over, curled down, and um, looks like we're going to get good control. But we'll wait and see from the next coming up here. Uh, here's another combination here. I use Cobra with Roundup Extend and uh, did an excellent job. Even with those large droplets, I got pretty decent control with the Cobra, but again, it was with the Roundup Extend. So this is kind of like a, uh, the boxing analogy. <coughs> the dicamba punches it in the gut, and the water hemp curls down, and then the Cobra gives it an uppercut and knocks it out. It, it kind of looked really good in that uh, tank mix. Okay. Skip ahead about three weeks. This is what that untreated plot looks like now. Okay, horrible. And there's what the Roundup Ready beans look like. Horrible. So all of those water in came back. Uh, this was the Liberty trial. So we had Valor. Valor didn't get activated because we didn't have enough rainfall. One application of Liberty is not going to do it. You need two applications of Liberty plus a residual uh, to help with water in. But there's what the Roundup Extend looked like. So. Um, excellent control. Um, here's one with a warm ultra added to the round with extend, and um, we nail it. Okay. My best looking plots in my trials at, at Elwood was the round of extend. Okay. So you can make the Liberty work, but again, it's going to take two applications, it's going to take two different residuals with that uh, to get a plot that looks clean like this. What's this called? Mirror's tail. Okay. Did this farmer do the right thing? If this was a farmer. What's wrong with this picture? He didn't do anything to the mare's tail after he planted the beans, right? He planted the beans and then he came back to try to do something to the mare's tail. That's a no-no. You want to kill a mare's tail before you plant the beans. So here's a burn down with uh, a residual and Roundup Extend, and all of these are carcasses of mare's tail. So Roundup Extend or the dicamba is excellent on mare's tail. Uh, here's a patch before we planted. Here we use Roundup Extend and Warm together. Um, excellent control. Here's the untreated strips between my plots, and uh, so dicamba is great on mare's tail. Okay. You want to make sure the mare's tail don't get above six inches. You want to get in that four to six inches. Once they start to bolt, then you know it's hard to kill them with anything, really. But uh, it's much better than 2,4-D. The 2,4-D is getting weaker and weaker and weaker on, on mare's tail. This was Liberty. Again, this is in a double crop situation, so we 
cut the, the, the mare's tail off with the uh, cutter bar. Uh, we killed the leaves that were there, but the mare's tail came back because the, uh, the liberty doesn't have any residual, or doesn't transfer. Giant ragweed. Um, here I use Roundup and Warren Ultra. It looks really good. This is a bare ground trial. But some of those ragweeds look like that. This was eight days after I sprayed. Did yours look like this? You're like, oh, is this going to live or die? I get so many pictures from guys on their iPhones and smartphones that send it to me. Is this going to live or die? I don't know. I can't even make out where it is. Is that a weed? So I get that all the time. So it's really hard to tell. Um, if you look at the leaf axles, you'll notice that there's a lot of green there. There's little green buds. They might. Okay. Well, if you add Extendamax, there's nothing there. So that tells you very easily that the dicamba snuffs out the giant rags. It's excellent for giant rags. Oh, there's our last quiz. Which would be a possible recommendation then for around the grade to extend the cropping system? Okay? Read all of those and tell me what you think would be the best recommendation. Okay, we'll start A and move down. So A, round up extend alone. You gonna do that? Let's all do this. Okay. Yes, round up extend is good, right? On the weeds that we show you. But we do not want to start using that by itself. We don't want to rely on one application or one herbicide. Then they're done that. And we've got resistant weeds. So we want to use multiple modes of action. So even though this may be effective, it won't be effective for very long if we that's all we do. So we've got to use residuals. How about B? Round of extend, we did that in the burn down, and we came back with extend the max post emergence. But it's almost like A. Because if you have Roundup resistant weeds, there's only one chemical that's actually working, and that's the dicamba. And so again, you're, you're using the same thing again. So that's not going to work. I like C. So if we use a pre emergent, Residual, followed by Roundup Extend, and we put some warrant in there for a residual. That's a good program. Okay, that was that was I used that at the Elwood site. It looked really good. How about D? No, we're getting our chemicals mixed up here. We're getting our traits mixed up. Don't use a list on Roundup Extend. That's 24D. And if you go to the Dow Field Day, they'll say don't use Roundup Extend on their soybeans because it will kill them. Not just hurt them, it will kill them. And then E also is very good. Uh, you can extend the max with your roundup, burn down, followed by warm, over post. You don't have to use dicamba post-emergence, guys. If you've got an area where you're, maybe you have a sensitive crop, tomatoes or something, you know, if you don't want to risk it, you don't have to. You can use something else uh, post-emergence that you can put your dicamba on at planting or as a burn down before those sensitive crops are left. Okay? Under which conditions would you expect more soil residual weed control with dicamba? Okay, we didn't, I don't think I talked about this with this group. This would be like my college exams, you know, when you get this question, like, when did we talk about this? <laughs> you know, it's like through a ringer at me. So what where would we get more residual control? Dry spring, a wet spring, when we tank mix with Roundup, uh, trick question, dicamba has no soil activity, or it's getting pretty close to launch, I don't care. Don't know, don't care. You like E? <laughs> well, it's not E, it's not D. Dicamba does have soil activity. Okay. You notice a lot of those are the Extendamax or Roundup Extend Pre. It does have soil activity. Now, so the answer or the options are A or B. Okay? If you get this right, you get a free lunch, that's what I'm told. You get it wrong, you get down the road. Okay, here's the answer. 
I'll let you decide what the answer is after I explain it. Dicamba is very water soluble. It doesn't take much moisture to activate it. Okay? Whereas your pre-emergent herbicides like Valor and Authority, those take quite a bit of rain to activate. If you have a dry spring, those things don't work. So you need soil moisture, okay, rainfall. So the answer is A. So dicamba in a dry spring has very good <coughs> residual control. All right? um, so back in 2012, we had a drought, drought year. I had some my, my mare's tail plots. Um, I worked with a farmer. I said, I'm going to clean up all these mare's tail before I'm done. So, you know, don't worry about it. And he said, okay, good to go. We can do that. Uh, no problem. So, July the 5th, I remember that. July the 5th of that year, 2012, if you remember, the day after 4th of July, it was 105 degrees that day. I was out there with a hoe, pulling mare's tail out of this guy's field. So, uh, but when I got to the dicamba plots, they were clean because the dicamba was activated, even though there wasn't probably any rainfall to activate any of the others. So when I went into the Valor plot, I had to do a lot of hoeing uh, because it didn't work. So the answer is a dry spring. Now the wet spring, the dicamba does what? It moves through the soil, it's gone. So you don't get any residual much in a very wet spring. So, any questions? I do have some literature up here. Uh, please pick this up. I went through a lot of this in our little talk here. So uh, take that home. Yes, sir. On your uh, chemistry, are you seeing anything when your tank mixing with a boy of the feed or any kind of salt you're adding in there? Liquid potash breaking down that coating. I've heard some problems when you start tank mixing a bunch of stuff. You're breaking down your barrier, and then that's where you're getting your drift issues. So we can't spray. Can we spray foliar to feed with it? Can we spray fungicide with it? You're only showing chemistry. What else can we put with it? Okay, so great question. And here's the answer. We've got a um, wind tunnel in Nebraska where we're testing all of these different techniques. Just to your point, is it going to cause drift? Are we going to break down the vapor drift? We're going to add, is it going to cause more volatility? So all that we're, we're testing right now. The ones that are going to be approved, and once they go through and they're clean, no, no problems with drip, it will be on a uh, website. So this is, this is very new, first time we've ever seen it before, where you read a label and it says go to this website to see if that tank mix is approved. So that's what we're going to do. And just because there's so many tank mix combinations, I guess they can't put it all on, on the label. So, uh, in order to have approval, we've got to run through this uh, this uh, wind tunnel testing, and that's EPA's mandate that we do that. So, in your plots, you didn't spray a full yield feed or anything with it? I did not. All your spraying is chemistry? That's all I did was chemistry, yeah. yeah. Other questions? Well, to go back to your point, what was the drop of size we needed with round of extent? Small or large? Large. large. What drop of size do you want with the fungicide? Small. Small. So maybe they're not, they might be compatible, but you, you're using the wrong tip if you're spraying a fungicide or an insecticide. So. All right, that's all I have. You are free to go.